Hello, welcome to the Dales. I've been trying to get in these paddocks for several months, but it's always had uh, bullocks and things in them. They're up near the farmhouse and uh, they're on a crossroad, so there could be something here, and then again, maybe not. Uh, I've got a sign. I've had a signal. Uh, let me just figure out what it is first while you look at the view. Um, it's a uh, Scottish shilling, 1948. Deary me, if it had been 46, it would have been silver. Oh, <laughs> first signal, coin, can't Whoa. be bad. Second decent signal, a diggable signal, and it's a George third half penny. Things are looking up. Well, I've come through these three fields here. Horrible, horrible, horrible pasture. And, and all I'm getting is deep, uh, deep iron. Really, really, really. I've just got a piece of lead. Whoa, really pleased. <laughs> oh, that's a new one on me. A, a, a tunnel. Let's see if I can stick camera in there and actually pick something up. There's shelves, there's a window there, or was. Shelves. And that's a fireplace at the back there, I think. This was a little, um, little house. Mm. Let's back off a bit. <laughs> oh, and the shelves, shelves on this other side here, just hidden inside. <laughs> I've got a pheasant around here somewhere, doesn't like me. <laughs> uh, mm. Yeah, quack. <laughs> well, I've given that rough pasture up as a bad job and uh, come into the three front fields here. Uh, just got a ring. Hold your trousers up, ring, I think. <laughs> Let's hope we do better in here. I think I'm flogging a dead horse here. I got two coins and then nothing. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, flogging a dead horse. So I come back to where I found the second coin. And, uh, lo and behold, I got another signal. Come on. So it's all out. What are you? 18. 18. 18 what? 62, I think. It's a young bonnet, Vicky. Compulsory iron ring. Hey. 1945 farthing. Hey. That was a nice down deep signal. Ooh, you know. Uh, George six should clean up well that uh, George three uh, about 1775 deep very quiet woo -woo type signal that. it was down deep but it's too white it can't possibly be silver no I didn't <laughs> oh oh it's a, a bale seal Right. Uh, ICK. And nothing on the back. Hello, yeah, yeah, one for you there, Stuart. I'll put one over there, turn it over, put the other over here, and stick them together. Ah. George three, um, half penny. I think it's a 1799. One of these giant half pennies. Uh, I've done not bad. Just in this little area, just here. <laughs> Everywhere else barren, but for some reason they were here, so I'll give it some welly. <sighs> Clouded over, thank goodness. That sun is hot when it comes through. Oh, iron buckle. Don't do iron. Go up there. Look at these thistles, they're blowing seeds all over the place. It's in fairy tale where they they use 
these thistle down to make um, pillows or something. How do they get the seeds out? Off you go. Ooh. <laughs> There's no way of stopping these thistles. They'll just spread and spread and spread. Well, it looks like Georgian, but it's very thin. Brillo works wonders, you know. <laughs> well, look, a loom weight. That could well be another um, hanger at the bottom. I haven't got anything to clean it out with. Oh, good one. Not necessarily flax, it could be, you know, they all had a little woolen uh, weaving frame. Oh, a hollow ball type thing. Right, the car's only there. I think I'll have a break, have a brew and a bite to eat, and then decide whether to carry on here. I'll nip down to that uh, old field I was on yesterday. Now oh, I've got seven coins. <sighs> Bloody hard work. <laughs> You'll notice I've put them in a tub. I've taken them out of my wet box and I've put them in the tub and I pour pop over the top of them. <laughs> yeah, God. Heath Robinson. It keeps them dry. Uh, it doesn't keep them dry, it keeps them wet. Until I get home. <laughs> and then they can go safe in my bag. So should I go back in there or should I go down about half a mile down the road and have a look at another little field? Hmm. Decision, decision. So I'll just crunch my biscuits. <laughs> okay, I've come back in here. <laughs> uh, you never know, there might just be something hanging about that I've missed. Another iron buckle. <laughs> that's three, isn't it? Oh, now that's a welcome sight. I've just had a succession of iron, deep iron, deep iron, deep iron. Oh, tiring. Gonna need the Brillo 1700 and something. <laughs> Look at the size of that lead, you'd think you were at West House Mill. <laughs> Huge. Uh, 1907. That's Edward Seven. There we go. I wandered back over here. <laughs> they seem to be on this side of the field. <laughs> we all know cow plops uh, sound off. They give about a 29 usually. But when they're reading, Oh, come on, play ball. Higher numbers means we got to go through it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Hiding under that pool. <laughs> ah, what is it? Uh, George, I think. 1700s again. Bit lacking on the silver. Uh, times this day, as is too good for its own boots. <laughs> ah, tiny little stud, down deep. My goodness, button. Uh, iridescent looking thing with a, a crown on it. It's been damaged. A shame. Oh, that's got to be the smallest coin mall ever. Uh, <laughs> it's bound to be a button. Come on, come on. Oh, then hard to get. There you are. What are you? Yeah, just a piece of bronze, aren't you? <laughs> Not even a button. Oh well. So welcome to the roundup. Um, when I go out, I've, I've got hundreds of fields over many square miles to look at, and I'm trying to find the the medieval ones, um, 
here I'm working about half a mile away from where I found hammered uh, silvers. Uh, Charles and Elizabeth, Charles I, Elizabeth I. But you've got, you know, I get what I get. None of my hunts are rigged. Whatever I get, <laughs> that's what I get. And these fields that were next to the farmhouse, I thought, these could well be um, um, horse trading fields and there might be something decent in them, but funny enough, we get huge chunks of lead. <laughs> More like Westhouse. A bit of copper strap. Assorted bits of lead, all with... Everyone tells a little story, but they've all sort of got patterns on them, bits of spoons and things, but never tell a complete tale. Look at the decoration there. That's the rim of something, but what? The rest of it's gone. Uh, <laughs> big signals. <laughs> they're either deep iron or they're um, huge brass nuts. Still, they'll go for scrap. Get quite a few of these in the fields. Um, they're, they're off the ends of canes and things, or just little beasles. This, I should know what this is. It's. Um, you see the screw part? That's supposed to go straight up the middle, but I'm not bending it. it it'll just break. Bronze gets very brittle. That's the end of a, another brass rod, I think. And that screwed into it on the end of the rod. So it's just a, a ball off the end of a, a brass rod. Ring, probably for holding your braces up. Uh, one brace comes down there, another there, and one off the bottom. For fastening three things together, these rings. Now, coins. Look at that. Scottish shilling. <laughs> if it were 46, it would have been silver. <laughs> Quite decent condition, actually. But not as good as this farthing. I mean, this, this farthing is, is, is super, super. Aren't you? Just look at you. 1945 farthing. They had them when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, did I, I worked it out. There's, I think there's 40. Um, <laughs> no, my head hurts. <laughs> it's, it's hardly anything compared to modern money. Maybe a twentieth of, of a modern penny or something stupid. But it would still buy you sweets and things like that in those days. 1907 penny. 1862, uh, yes. Jumps back 50 years. Only got one button, but it was, it was a goodie. And then this, um, I call it a bale seal. It isn't, it's, uh, it's a bag seal. ICK. It's got the two tunnels for running the wires through, but they go right to the edge of it, look. So they, they were opened up and you just stuck this in and then clamped it over. I have no idea. Stuart, that's one for you, mate. You're the bag seal, man. <laughs> and then we jump back, 1806. I thought this was 1799 because it was it seemed to be much bigger than the others in the range but the way you tell very quickly if it's the same size as a penny it's 1799 but it isn't it's not big enough luck so got to be 1806 uh, and if we have a look have a look up close, you'll see it does say 1806. That's another 1806, but it's badly worn. There's George III, 1775. You can't really tell the dates on these things. It's, uh, let's see, get this right, it's there at the bottom. You make that out. Well, I can. <laughs> it says, just barely see a one, seven, seven, 
and I'm going to call that a five. Seventeen seventy-five. <laughs> Uh, could be 72, 74, 75, 76, 78. So I always round them off somewhere around the middle. 75. That's another one. Uh, there's the three ones for George Third. Look. Can't really see his head. And the date. No chance. But it's 1775 ish. Right, like to see this one? George two. It's only got two ones up there, look. George the second. And he's round about 1750. Uh, oh, let's have a look. That's an Irish one. That's an Irish half penny. That's there's a crown. And underneath there there's an angel and a harp. A harp with an angel on on one side but you just can't see it but that's the crown and around the top it says Hibernia not Britannia you're Irish aren't you lad they had an awful lot of Irish laborers over in those days who liked to be paid in their own money because then they could take it home um, now this one this is the same uh, now, are you Irish? Let's have a look. I can't, can't tell. Can't tell. But I'd say that's Britannia on the back. So that's an English one. And that's an Irish one. So there you go. That's as far back as I could get. 1750. And really, I'm trying for 1550. <laughs> but if it's there, it's there. And if it isn't, it isn't. Uh, but no matter what you get, they all tell a story. And it's um, really fascinating. But when you've been hammering a huge area like I have, for, well, what, nigh on uh, over 12 months now, you get to know the place. But... Mm, a little bit disappointed. I expected more of that field. <laughs> Something like a sovereign. <laughs> Talking of sovereigns, um, let me show you something. What I'm looking for in these horse fields are these. Gold sovereigns. Oops, come on. Play ball. Really nice look. Aren't you beautiful, eh? 1888. Jubilee Crown, Victoria. Nice coin, eh? That's the sort of thing we're looking for in horse fields, but not this coin. This isn't real. You can get these on eBay for um, about a fiver. The the replicas. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd just show you. Anybody flaunting an 1888? Jubilee head. <laughs> it's a replica. <laughs> There's also a lot of, um, uh, now let me think, 1914. The, there's hundreds of uh, 1914 sovereigns on the net. You pick them up for about £4 a piece. I'm surprised that they haven't appeared on, on people's videos when they're going out. I mean, they got the sort of humour where they go, oh, look, found these. Well, now, <laughs> I would love to have found the sovereigns today. Done it before, and I've had three <laughs> half sovereigns uh, off horse fields. But uh, bear in mind the date, 1888, Jubilee, more than likely a forgery. Um, so... I'll just leave you with that bit of whole gold in there, uh, four, you know, four, how do they say it in the French? Uh, <laughs> but it's out there, go get whatever there is, till I see you next time, take care, bye.